Welcome to this edition of Diligence Inside America's Boardrooms. I'm TK Kerstetter, and I'll be your host for today's show. Today, we're going to be talking about board and CEO leadership principles for the next era of capitalism. And joining me for that discussion is Hubert Jolly, who's a board member with Johnson & Johnson and Ralph Lauren Corp. And he is the former chairman and CEO of Best Buy. In addition to that, he's a senior lecturer at the Harvard Business School and now a best-selling author. So welcome, Hubert. PK, thank you so much for having me. So you orchestrated what is now the famous turnaround of Best Buy that was all but given for dead in the water. And I want to specifically ask you what the role of the board was um, in bringing around, bringing you aboard and also supporting your turnaround plan. But before we do, do that, I think we need to at least address this best-selling author issue. And your book was The Heart of Business, Leadership Principles for the Next Era of Capitalism. So Hubert, in a nutshell, what motivated the book and what can boards and the C-suite executives glean from the book to make them better stewards of the companies going forward? So I decided to write this book because, TK, I wanted to add my voice and, and my energy to others who are advocating for the necessary and urgent, in my view, refoundation of business and capitalism around the idea that business is about pursuing a noble purpose, putting people at the center, embracing all stakeholders, and treating profit as an outcome, something that you know most people agree with today. But we also know, you can see the scars on my face, that this is hard to do. So based on my experience and the success of the turnaround of Best Buy, I wanted to provide a uh, almost a handbook, a how-to manual, a set of examples and concrete advice for every leader who is keen to move in that direction and uh, wanted to be uh, a bit of help in that journey. So that's why I wrote this book, The Heart of Business, Leadership Principles for the Next Era of Capitalism. So what would be, um, if you had to give something that, we'll talk about the boards in a minute, but if you had to talk about what the executives could glean from this, what, would, what sort of jumps out at you? There's a, a number of things. One is that I think leadership starts from the inside out, right? It starts with, in particular in these crazy times, right? Connecting with who we are as a leader, who do we want to be as a leader? What legacy, how do we want to be remembered? So connecting with our personal purpose and using our personal purpose as foundation for corporate purpose. It's also the idea that the model of the leader as the superhero, you know, the one who knows everything, has got all of the answers, is the smartest person in the room and tells other people what to do. Eh, that doesn't work anymore <laughs> because here's the scoop. Everything now is so unprecedented that no one knows what to do. And so you need this uh, empathetic a humble, vulnerable leader who can connect with his team and can say, look, this is unprecedented. Let's, I don't have the end. Let's try to figure this out together and can, ins can inspire people to serve that noble purpose and who understand their role is not to come up with the answers, but to create the environment that can, as I say in the book, unleash human magic and create irrationally good results because people will feel that they can be their best, the biggest version of themselves, the most beautiful version of themselves. And it's a significant rewire for many of us who were brought in as, uh, you know, my education was left brain, right, is going to uh, matter. And so we need to move from being great business leaders to also be great human leaders. And that's a significant uh, rewire. And I think that so many of the CEOs I know are on that journey, it's, uh, it's hard. Um, and from a board standpoint, one of the implications, by the way, is that, uh, you know, your CEO, like probably all of the CEOs I know, is it, it's, it's hard, it's struggling. So making sure that the, the CEO and the management team get the mental, physical, you know, uh, emotional, spiritual support that they need to continue to plow ahead in these uh, unprecedented uh, uh, circumstances, I think, uh, and advise them, you know, take a break, take care of yourself. Remember when we were flying on airplanes, the steward 
or stewardess would tell us if the oxygen mask comes down, put it on yourself first before you can help others. So having your CEO and your management team take good care of themselves so that they can be, you know, amazing leaders. I think that's particularly relevant in this time. Yeah, I would agree. That's uh, very relevant for today's time. So, so moving on, I, I had the pleasure of personally knowing some of the directors who were bought on uh, the Best Buy board uh, after the sort of the peak of the problems happened. Um, and but I'm hoping that you can share um, the you know boards. Um, the board bringing you on board and then how they supported your plan for the turnaround, because, you know, everybody, you know, um, understands your part of the story, I think, but not everybody understand what the board's role is in that turnaround. It's a, it's a critical role. And thank you for highlighting this. So we have to rewind back to 2012, right? TK? Everybody thinks the company is going to die the founder, you know, uh, Dick Schultz, amazing guy, uh, stepped down to, from the board. He's trying to do a take privates. Uh, so you're in the middle of a campaign. The CEO has been fired because of behavioral, you know, uh, circumstances. This is a mess. And so uh, here is a board that I want to, you know, salute and give a lot of credit to uh, Hatim Chiabji, who then, you know, all of a sudden became the non-executive uh, chairman, and Kathy Higgins Victor. Uh, who led the, the search, they have to navigate this. They, at the same time, they have to navigate the activist campaign of the founder, so very tricky, and launch the search. And Kathy, you know, was leading a committee. They were used, They were working with Spencer Stewart and Jim Citrin and Susan Hart. They did, of course, they did a fabulous job, TK. Right? They, they got me. <laughs> <laughs> but very professional, and I really enjoyed our conversation. They while there was chaos all around, I felt this was a very professionally run, you know, uh, uh, search process. And I felt really good as a candidate. I told them because I had done my due diligence that uh, despite what everybody was saying, I felt that we could do a turnaround and actually wanted the job. Uh, and then so then I get on board. And we worked so well together. Uh, you know, they, they uh, initially I didn't get involved in the uh, activist campaign or the, the, the dialogue with, uh, with Dick because I needed to put my feet under the table and get to know the company and build a plan. Um, eventually, I got involved and with Hatim. We managed a reconciliation with the founder, and I really valued his support. And it felt that the right thing, the take private, wouldn't work, but it still meant that uh, reconciling with the founder made a lot of sense. And we did this uh, you know, in great transparency. And then once we had done that with Hatim and Kathy as head of NumGov, we undertook a complete refresh on, 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 uh, of the board to the point that today there's only one board member who is left from that time. It was the amazing uh, uh, Lisa Caputo. I spoke with her this week. She's an amazing uh, uh, leader. She's now heading uh, NumGov. And we we deliberately decided, okay, we want, we're going to want a set of skills on the board of people who have experience with significant transformations, who have experience with technology, who have experience with services. And we work with a couple of search firms over time. And we built, you know, an amazing board from a capability standpoint, as well as from a diversity standpoint. When I stepped down, we had a majority of women on the board and we had three black African-American uh, directors. And so I, I, I give us very, very high, high marks uh, in terms of, the reshaping of the board, and then as well as from the standpoint of the role played, the, the role the board played in the transformation, combination of supporting the management team and challenging the management team. So challenging the management team, you know, keeping us on our toes and saying, great, good job there, but, you know, what's the next level and, and giving us advice, opening doors for us. And, you know, one of the things I've learned is there's several attitude you can have vis-a-vis your -vis board, right? You can, as a CEO, you can see it as a necessary evil, uh, you, uh, or you can see it as a, as a weapon. And I thought that uh, the board could give me superhuman powers, uh, and provided that they would understand the difference between governance and management, which they all did. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's just been fabulous, including during the times of crisis. I was still executive chairman of the board, you know, when we had COVID hit, uh, in other circumstances, and it helps to have adults around the table. And we, I couldn't be more impressed and grateful for 
you know, what, uh, what they did during the time. Kudos to them. So, Hubert, you have such experience, not only from your management side, but, you know, now from the board side, sitting on the other side of the table. So if you were asked as from the CEO's point of view to offer one piece of advice to board members today um, that will help them be more effective, what would what piece of advice would you offer? I've heard one piece of advice around, you know, the, the the mental and physical and spiritual help of the of the CEO and the management team. I mean, the other thing is, and I cover it in the conclusion of the book, which is that uh, in the context of the movement towards stakeholder capitalism, uh, we view the role of the boards, right, in terms of how we pick leaders, how do we define great leadership, how we define the purpose of the company, how do we make sure that purpose comes to life, how do we measure success. How do we have this declaration of interdependence, not forgetting the shareholders, but knowing that a business cannot be uh, successful uh, in isolation? And then last piece, uh, TK, a new area of interest for the board is the culture of the company. In the book, I argue that it's unleashing human magic at the company that was ultimately the, the, the big driver of the success of the company. And understanding what the management team, how the management team is shaping the culture uh, in a positive way, uh, in support of the purpose and the strategy, I think that's a new area that uh, boards, I think, uh, can uh, can look into. So these are some. I wouldn't call them advice; it's more observations. Uh, great boards are, are are focused on that, so I wouldn't that wouldn't qualify as advice, TK. <laughs> yeah. Well, on this show, we we spend a great deal of time on board leadership and culture, so it just fits in very well with uh, sort of the soapbox that we've been standing on for some time. So uh, importantly, where can people get a copy of the book? Because it sounds so practical. So uh, this great book, and this is my infomercial, right? <laughs> uh, it's available everywhere where you can find books. So Amazon and all of the good booksellers. People can also visit my website, uh, ubergeli.org, uh, where there's a ton of resources. They can also get the book there. But uh, I, I make a lot of content available. There is, for example, TK, a business electrocardiogram, which is a tool to help assess the health of the heart of your business, or a purposometer, which is to help assess how good your purpose is as a, as a corporation. So uh, a couple of places where people can go. Well, Hubert, I can't thank you enough for taking the time out of your busy schedule to join us. Everything is just so right on for today's time and all the challenges that both management and board has. It's uh, sort of enlightening to hear your upbeat attitude on all this. It, it, it's very refreshing. So I want to thank you for taking the time. Thank you, TK. Have a great day. And that will conclude this edition of Inside America's Boardrooms. We hope you enjoyed the show. We'll be back again next week when we take another critical look at an important topic to help you be a better board member or committee member. So we'll see you then. <music>